actually know where particularly to invest. So I think I just want to kick off, um, you know, we, we've got a property builder here, we've got analysts, um, we've also got regulators, so it's going to be a very interesting mix. And please, as we did earlier on, jump in, let's make this conversation casual, except there's an audience right here <laughs> watching us. Okay, so I think I, I wanted to kick off with um, maybe Nico. Um, in, in terms of, you know, when we talked about property investments, um, did we have reached all-time highs, okay? Um, and this is, it's, you know, to many people, young people right now, it's something very expensive. But we were talking offline, saying if you had seen the prices three years ago, people had thought those were already expensive. So to what extent is this going to be sustainable? Hello. Uh, good afternoon again, and uh, thank you, Lohuli, for the opportunity to be part of this panel today. So um, basically, if you just look at the, the just to focus first on the office market, uh, we're talking about this year, I mean this year to date, there are about 1 million square meters released in terms of demand. And to put that in perspective, that makes us one of the largest markets in, in the globally, next to maybe Tokyo, Shanghai, Beijing. And last year, we did close to 1.2 million square meters of office demand, backed by again, the call center, BBO industry, as you have heard, uh, the POGOs are, are here and they're here to stay, hopefully. And of course, that uh, that just brings up the numbers of how much demand is taken in the market. In terms of rent, if you you're, if you look at, let's say, Bonifacio, uh, rents in Bonifacio are now at 1314, but you'd be surprised if you look at rents in the Bay Area. Uh, three, four years ago, the Bay Area rents were maybe about sub 700, but very recently, we've seen rates or deals go for as much as 1.6. One seven per square, and I guess people will ask, is that sustainable? Um, hopefully it is, but I mean, it's 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 a pogo. I mean, most of the locators in that part of town are pogos, and developers there are taking advantage while the pogos are here. So it's hard. I mean, if we're in an all-time high, we're always in an all-time high. I guess people that bought luxury condominium three years ago in Bonifacio, uh, two hundred fifty thousand, say you know that price might not uh, go as high as, as what they bought it, but we were looking at Bonifacio Luxury Residential close to about the, the highest it's peak is about uh, 600,000 a day. So I think real estate is still a safe investment whether it's at its peak and uh, we continue to, uh, to uh, continue to appreciate that. Sir Noel, can you comment on that? Because your company is not necessarily exposed to Bogos or if at all, very limited. Can you say that you can have the exact, the same sort of growth as the real estate companies that are exposed to the high growth of POGOs? The, the short answer to your question uh, as to whether we have reached an all-time high, yes, we have. Uh, the, the second point uh, that, you, uh, that you were asking about, the second question was, uh, is, is this sustainable? We believe that uh, that's still a long way to go. Um, Looking at uh, what has happened in the last five years, uh, where property values have, uh, moved, have increased in multiples, Late, uh, earlier we were talking about uh, uh, Port Bonifacio prices from three years ago, about 600,000. Now uh, it's being quoted at the uh, north of a million pesos, uh, and uh, probably even grow, uh, growing uh, even more. Uh, and we, we talked about uh, uh, benchmarking versus uh, prices of real estate uh, in, uh, in, uh, in our neighbors, not like the Bangkok, uh, uh, Kuala Lumpur, Singapore, Hong Kong, and we're still far, but we're still, we're still cheap. We're still cheap compared to where they are. And, uh, and uh, we have to understand the, the, the drivers uh, of prices, what drives prices uh, up. Uh, uh, in the Philippine context, it's about uh, uh, demographics and economic growth. Uh, more and more people are able to, can now afford uh, real estate products. Uh, more and more, more people are joining uh, middle class and can afford real estate products. So uh, in Torre Lorenzo, we do five year, uh, we, we, we do five year plans. We look forward as far as 10 years. Uh, we have a more, uh, we have a, 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 a fixed five year plan and uh, and yeah, we, we, we believe that in the next five years, uh, this is this thing is going to continue. Richard, can you comment on that? If the poll goes pull out, uh, which is a possibility, will our demographics fail or plug 
the gap? Well, if you look at um, the pogo industry right now, so they started in 2016. So they were new. Yes. So they were only taking at that point about um, 10%, 20%. Uh, last year, they were at around 30% of the office demand in Metro Manila. So we have about a million square meters of data. That's 300,000 square meters taken up by this one industry. To put that into perspective, the BPO market used to take up about 60, about 60 percent of the market before Pogo. And now they're now down to around 30, 40 percent. So whatever the slack that was left from the BPO was now taken up by Pogo. And the reality is, if the Pogo wasn't here, we would have had the correction already. Uh, 2016, 2017 would have gone down already. Because um, we had about a million square meters of new office space every year. And the market is only used to about 400 to 500, half of that. So if the Pogo didn't come in, you know, the rents would have, would have corrected anyway. Because our, uh, uh, our cycle right now, we are, we are at the longest cycle that we've seen for property. Do you agree with that, Nico? I, I think in that perspective also of a lot of developers uh, that, that may seem worried in the uh, case of uh, a lot of them, uh, and, and the difference between them and the regular office taker is most of them will have some buffer when it comes to type of deposits that they have. So a typical office tenant, traditional office tenant, would usually have to tough up maybe about six months of rent that's uh, advancing security for leasing space. Uh, we've seen a lot of developers try to hedge or try to uh, create that buffer just in case that uh, there's some volatility and they pull out. So they're secured by as much as 24, 12 to about 24 months. So what that means is they, are, they have 24 months to look for a tenant. Uh, I agree that, that yes, without the Pogo, the market would have corrected that way, just because of the amount of supply that, uh, that has pumped in. But, but again, we can't discount that the offshore and outsourcing sector is still strong. Uh, they might not have taken the same space as previous years, but, but we believe that, that the industry will still prosper, whether that be on a captive side or a better side. So we've seen a lot of these tech companies like, like Amazon and Google now offshoring and doing more back office work here as opposed to before. So they, they started with a rep office and now they're taking more space in the market, even with the market conditions that we have today. Ma'am Sika, the, the PSP governor has been vocal in saying that we don't necessarily need the bogos um, to fuel our economy. And he's also said that this might even you know, increase the money laundering and that there's a lot of these issues. Do you agree with that? We did an assessment of the impact of OVOs on the price of our resident. We have this index that we monitor regularly. And what we saw is that, um, as, as, as what was stated earlier, that there was a sudden increase in the price of rent. But then if you look at the contribution, the net contribution of these OVOs is not that big, actually. So we were saying that... We can survive without them. Yes, as of the moment, as of now, given the uh, current number that they have, uh, it, it's not big enough to contribute much to our GDP. Interesting point. Mr. Noel, um, how do you manage this in terms of uh, you know, the locations that you want to geographically put in? Are, you know, is there still this interest in being close to the Pogos because you have a guaranteed amount of tenants, for example? Is that not in your consideration whatsoever? Um, we pioneered uh, bringing university residences in the Philippines. And when you say university residences here located near schools, uh, in the case of Tora and Orang, so we, our first projects uh, are, were located, are located near the premium uh, schools in the Philippines. We started off with Nassau, uh, and then UST, and, uh, UP Manila, now uh, at Ibuna. Uh, I guess location is an issue here for for uh, Secondly, um, we're we're we're, uh, we're offering a premium product, so price points uh, are a bit high. We do have a, a a project, a property in South in South Metro Manila, which has a good sprinkling of uh, yeah, Pogo. 
residents. Uh, but since they're priced at a premium, we get the right kind of uh, more senior supervisors and managers of the polos, and therefore easier easier to deal with. Um, so, uh, and besides... What about, sir, in terms of your hotels businesses? Uh, yeah, well, uh, we, we're, we're now just... We just recently launched our uh, five-star hotel and uh, residences in Davao. Yeah, uh, of course, you cannot stop anybody who wants to uh, get into your hotel. We get a good number of, uh, of, of, uh, of, of visitors coming from different uh, different countries. It's still the biggest, uh, the biggest uh, 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 nationality groups that uh, uh, frequent our, our hotels is still the Americans and the, Jap the Koreans and Japanese. And now strongly growing is the Chinese market. Uh, Pogo, we don't know if, uh, they are, or if our hotel guests are Pogo uh, employees, but on our, uh, in our student residences uh, uh, properties, we did get, uh, uh, we are getting serious inquiries coming from block buyers, and we suspect that they would eventually uh, lease them over to. Uh, all those, but uh, it's an internal discipline, and we have to work vigilant to make sure that uh, we have the right type of residence. Because uh, since we're selling to, and our residents are mostly children of the rich, uh, we don't want them to be living uh, with uh, you know uh, uh, those type of uh, residents. Ms. Sikat, did as an economic manager, did you expect this sort of boom? Uh, because of this entry in focus, or when you know President Duterte issued all of these licenses in 2016, as was mentioned, was this something that you, you know, in the BSP expected? And also, just to touch on that, do you expect them to still be here in the next three years? No, actually, we considered it as if it's, it was a big deal. You know, uh, this is similar. The, the, the way they conduct their business is similar to big deal. But then again, um, because of the proliferation of Pogos coming in into the country, well, it added pressure on, on some of the prices, as I said, on our real estate. And um, considering the contribution of, you know, the Pogos, net contribution, not even the cross, the net contribution, is not too significant, you know. So, well, we hope that they will continue, but they, you know, you have to stick to, to, uh, to have a balance between maintaining a good source of income for the country, but at the same time, um, having this um, guest observing our rules. I think that's the thing that we need to, uh, to consider here. Um, there are some reports of violation, even um, non-payment of tax for their workers here. I, I think they have certain rules to, uh, to abide, you know, if they come in, just like any other foreign direct investors, they come in, we welcome them, because they provide employment to our people, they provide, uh, you know, um, uh, income, you know. But then again, we have to balance, you know, what they provide us and, you know, and, and what they have to pay us.